Hi folks, I'm Modulus. I'm back again for my updates on my uh, past builds. Uh, so this time it's going to be the 135th scale tanks. Uh, previously I've done my 172, so this time it's going to be 135th. And as I told you, I might need to do two rounds, but I managed to squeeze everything in. So this would be all the uh, 135th uh, collections and I do have uh, a few more on my table here which I'll show you because uh, not everything can fit on this, uh, this table. So for this time uh, I have uh, grouped them up uh, for example like here uh, these, these were built uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a small kid it survived the uh, collections and then uh, most of these the rest of here and the back will be something that I have uh, built from like 10 to 15 years ago and then uh, also some uh, quite uh, recent builds so I'll just run through the manuals with you very very quickly uh, I'm not gonna talk about each one too much uh, unless there's something special about it so this is a, a German SDKFZ250 and I think uh, this is that model I don't think I can uh, hold it so you probably just have to look at it from here and I think I never even painted this I just colored it I was probably about 10, 12, can't really remember. The next, I got this Japan Type 1 uh, tank. And I think it's this one here. So, that was built also when I was a kid. And then for this tractor here, and I think this is like a shrimp wagon. Uh, and this is a T55, I think. So this T55, I don't have the instruction manuals. So there, there's motors in there. Um, this is a Tamiya, Tamiya. I think most of these are all Tamiyas, including this uh, Hetzer. And I think, uh, let me zoom in. You can see that I have tried to do Zimmerit and Back in those days, the way they teach you how to do Zimmerit is uh, by heating up a screwdriver and you know melting the plastics. Of course, uh, it doesn't look that good, but that was, you know, back in the 80s. And then I have this one here, which I can't really find the instruction manual. This was, this is not a Tamiya. Could be a Ari, Ari or something like that. And then I have this uh, M1 Abrams <coughs> and this is uh, it is actually a re remote control the, the controller is over here but of course uh, it doesn't work anymore and I just wanted to show you that uh, this thing has uh, the motors in there and there is some mechanism to actually uh, make the turret uh, spin so I played around with it when you know <clears throat> when I built it as a kid but I think now it, it doesn't work anymore because it's too old. So moving on next this this is uh, of course the you know the popular tank uh, King Tiger and this is the Dragon's uh, Battle of the Bulge version and then uh, it comes with uh, all these uh, figures. So most of these figures you see you see here even on the tiger tiger one is uh, is is from the king tiger. So this is the tiger one. It's a mid production by Tamiya. Then there is uh, this my favorite tank, uh, Stun Tiger. I've showed you shown you my uh, 172 version. So this is a 135th. And that's how it looks like. And most of my tanks are actually not really dirty. 
So I'm not sure. I mean, maybe I like it clean. And uh, okay, coming back to the Tiger One. Okay, this Tiger One was done probably about 15 years ago when I was in my 30s or you know mid 30s. So you can see that the Zimmerit is uh, is is much nicer compared to the Hetzer just now. So it has Zimmerit all over the side, the front. I think I done I've done this Zimmerit by you know putting some epoxy and then uh, using some kind of a roller to to make the surface texture. Oops, I think uh, this guy dropped, it's okay. So, okay, so that's the Sturm Tiger, looks very clean. And then next I have uh, a Birch, Birch Panzer Tiger P. So this, this is a dragon. Uh, you can see there's some chains here, there's some, uh, there's a winch. So that is the Birch Panzer. And then there's the French battle tank uh, B1 base. So this is Tamiya and <clears throat> as usual Tamiya is a very premium kit. Comes with a very, you know, this kind of a nice uh, uh, color guides and some maybe like some histories you know so this was a very very nice build uh, I think Tamiya's models the kits are really perfect the parts just fit so so nicely and then next is the M24 uh, is it Caffey or Chaffey Okay, so this is an artillery tank. Um, it's a little bit of uh, brownish uh, weathering. And next to it will be this. Uh, this is the tractor style RSO. I think it's uh, German. It's artillery also. And next is uh, M3A3 light like tank, uh, Stuart. So this is a AFV club. AFV is a Taiwanese uh, model maker. So this one has a... Uh, it comes... I'm not sure if it, it comes with a workable track or maybe I, I, bought, I bought it separately. So... The track, uh, individual uh, workable tracks, and it actually moves a little bit. So. And then I have uh, Tamiya's uh, Panzer Kampfwagen 2. So this is a very simple kit. That's Tamiya, and then next to that would be this thing, uh, Zvezda's uh, German light -like command tank. And uh, at the back here, just pull. I'll need to stand and uh, start moving around. So you can see some of the side views of these tanks here. Okay, so then moving on to this one, uh, this would be, um, it's a Dragon's uh, Flak Panzer, so this is also quite uh, clean, not much weathering. And next to this is something, yeah, something very different, it's the, uh, what they call the Sturm Panzer Wagon, the A7D. So this, I think this is a, uh, it's, it's by a company called Tauro. And I think it's a very small company because uh, it comes with some, uh, something like this. So he's, he's apparently the owner, he, he makes models, so He's asking what kind of models we like, then he will make it for us. 
So it's, uh, it's interesting. It's the only Tauro I've ever made. But I'm not, I don't think I will make another one. And uh, for the tank, uh, very simple. There is some interior. Uh, I think the interiors are not painted. So, and actually this, I, I have not totally finished uh, doing the colors, but I have uh, actually abandoned it. And the interesting thing about this tank is, this is all a separate piece of uh, tracks. And it comes with a pin to insert, to connect each tracks together. So that was something new for me. And then next is uh, nothing special there. That's a German Leopard VK1602 uh, Hobby Boss. And then next to that is uh, okay. These are these two are paper pencils. This is the E twenty five by Trumpeter, and the one next to it is the uh, E ten. So it is a Trumpeter also, and these were actually I didn't quite enjoy building it. Uh, if you can see the tracks, they're not even long enough. But they do give separate tracks, but I was just too lazy to use them, so I used the uh, rubber tracks instead. And I think this is a photo edge. There was some photo edge that came with those uh, the kits. And then this here would be Stum, uh, I can't even pronounce it, but that's dragon. And then back here, I have one. Okay, this is a trumpeter kit, and uh, this is an interesting tank. It's really long, it's the it's something like a tiger cannon and uh, it has a interior and uh, there's some workable thing here and actually this thing is uh, like spring spring activated but uh, that thing is functioning now and it uh, wasn't so straightforward or easy but it comes with uh, full interior, the engines and the driver seat bay. So I, I didn't glue this. And this this marking shim is something I created myself. Uh, so I'm not following any of the color guides given. The, the color guide will be something like that. But I just tried to do something interesting. And then, uh, okay. Next is the E100, which I mentioned I'm going to show you. So for this tank here, I did write down when I started it and when it ended. So from this, it looks like I took six days to build this. So that was, that's fast. Uh... This is a, it is a separate tracks, but some portion, some sections are in, you know, in the entire piece and only the rounded portion here is a separate. So it's not so difficult. Like this stem tiger here is all separate. The tiger one is a separate tracks and the king tiger is uh, separated uh, by sections. So actually, talking about 135th scale tanks, recently most of the tank comes with separate track these days and uh, that is the part where I don't really enjoy it because there's like 100, more than 100 pieces on each side and uh, gets quite 
boring after you know you have to clean it and you have to stick one by one so okay so the next one is the 60 centimeter Moser cow uh, this is a dragon so the dragon Moser cow doesn't have so much parts and I've also done a trumpeter so later I'll show you that one too so this one is also I think it was a separate or yeah, I think it's a separate tracks and this is in the uh, laid out the you know all these things are open in fact they can actually fold these things when they are being transported on the on the transporter so okay uh, something new something interesting here the shell is a aluminum lathe shell so it looks really nice and that's why i didn't paint it so it looks you know it looks like an aluminum if i paint it it could look like a plastic and then on top here i have something something really cute it's uh, 144 scale of this uh, Carl, Carl Moser. So I have it in 144, 135, and then I think uh, previously I've shown you in 172. So I have like three scales of this uh, Moser Carl. I think I like this, uh, it's not really a tank. Uh, it doesn't really move around that much. But somehow I I like the shape of it. So okay, moving on to this. Okay, this is Tamiya's uh, MK4 mail mail tank, and uh, it's uh, this tank is is very interesting. Uh, has a very nice color uh, guide here. And then it is actually uh, motorized. Uh, it is actually a motorized tank. So when I built it, I did play around with it. But just earlier, when you know, I wanted to test it for this uh, this upload. It it did it didn't uh, it didn't function. So I put in the batteries, but somehow it did not function at all so i'll move over here to show you this uh let's just hang on a minute let me just put my camera on a stand so okay i have two tanks here let me go with this first this is that tamiya's uh, version and it's interesting because uh I can just uh, open here like this it just opens easily and that's that's the gun so this is where the battery sits and uh, and there is a switch at the bottom but unfortunately I can't show this to you and, and these are workable separate tracks. It's very nice. And when it was actually moving, it's, you know, it's just the entire thing looks like a, like a chain tracks uh, moving, just, just, like the, just like the real tank. I think something dropped, but I think I can uh, glue that back. So yeah, that's Tamiya's uh, MK4. And then next I have another another Mark IV, but this is a uh, this is the tadpole tadpole version. And this is a uh, I think it's a Takom. I think it's a Takom's uh, yeah, it is a Takom. There you go. So this build was not as fun as Tamiya um, because of the way they design it maybe see like the Tamiya's uh, MK4 is uh, 
the entire thing is like in in a block but the way Takam Takam designed it everything is in a single piece so it wasn't so easy to assemble it I think they didn't want to have a big mold to to cast you know to mold out the the bigger pieces so they made everything into a, a flat piece and then everything has to be assembled glued and and the the interesting thing about this is the track actually moves it's workable and it did uh, snap on very easily for the tracks so it does move but it did but but this is not motorized at all so and it's so sad that I can't I can't move, I can't play around with this anymore. So, okay, uh, moving on next, I have, uh, I have this. And this, again, is uh, something railway. I, I, I can't pronounce this at all. This is Dragon. And then, uh, I'll just show you three of these, uh, the manuals first. Damp flow locomotive BR86, and then this is another huge thing here. So, this is the Moser Carl Gerard, but it's on a railway transport carrier. So, this is uh, Trumpeta Trumpeta. So, this is another one of those like uh, thousand, what, 200 parts things, you know. So, uh, let me just show you here, sorry about the mess. So this is the Templo Locomotive BR86. It is a locomotive. And uh, I can't really move all this because it's just too big. So I'll, I'll need to like move around and you know, take the video on this. And then that's the one, that funny thing uh, that I showed you, Commando Wagon, this thing. So this is also a railway vehicle. And then finally, I have this uh, Moser Carl Gerard in 135th scale on a transport carrier. So this is a shell. And uh, so, again, you know, when you talk about military AFVs, uh, even though this is big, uh, over a thousand parts, it's very straightforward build. You just build the entire thing and then, then start painting it. Then I did this uh, camouflage. So this thing actually will move, but then now I have this thing in here so if if I move this out maybe I can uh... so when they transport this I think some of these things are not supposed to be there so if I do this and then I, I have to take this out so this is then it will actually move but not too much, I guess. And, uh, okay. Let me just move this out from here. And because I want to show you that actually this, this thing here uh, moves. Oh my God, I think it just dropped. So, I don't think I can show you this uh, now. Some accident has happened. But in fact, the, the wheels on the track moves. Uh, later, I'm gonna have to fix that. So it does move. Um, not bad for something at this scale. So this also didn't take me that long. Maybe one, one to two months, I think. So this will be uh, my entire 
135th scale tank uh, collection from the past uh, 80s, 90s, up to year what 2000. So I, I'm sorry I have to run it, run through it real quickly. Maybe you did not get to have a close look on these. Uh, this piece is, you know, it's out. So, I think a lot of these tanks came with figures, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a very figure kind of person. So, I did manage to finish all the figures for the King Tiger, but for some others, I think I have left it in the box. I'm not a big fan of figures, but when I was a kid, yeah, I did. Uh, I think this guy has. This guy fell off. Because, you know, when you build the figures, it's, you know, you, you maybe you can get to like play around with it more. So. And I, I've never done a diorama on tanks. Not too big of a fan for diorama so 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 uh okay i think that would be it for this time i did not take too long uh, to explain all these tanks to you so i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i think next since i'm done with my tanks uh next could be could be could be jet fighter planes, World War Two planes, or you know cars. Th those will be coming up in my past uh, showcase builds. So uh, stay tuned and uh, thank thanks for watching, and uh, stay safe. Take care. Bye.